Civil War Guru Show. My name is Steve Munson, and I am the Civil War Guru. And today I have a wonderful opportunity to get in here and get an Ames Naval Bronze Boat Cannon. And we're going to talk about that. This is a fabulous piece of history. These things are extremely rare. And this is made by one of the best makers of the period. Ames Manufactured, Ch Chicopee, Massachusetts. And this style of barrel is called a Dalgren style because it has the yoke underneath of it, which is made to fit on these type of naval deck carriages. And these carriages are all iron other than the woods, the wood wheels. And the wheels are 34 inches tall, the barrel's 40 inches long, and it has bronze fittings, bronze tail wheel, bronze yoke, and we're gonna get up on close, close to it so you can see some of the markings, hopefully. And this cannon was actually manufactured around the 1840s, probably late 1840s. And uh, it is fully marked on the rear of the cannon, which we'll get up there. And then on the top of the barrel, it's marked uh, the ship's name, Three Friends. And that's engraved on the top. And we'll talk about the history on that here in just a second. Now the oral history I had on it, uh, prior to the, the ship to Three Friends, it was used in the Mississippi River uh, fleet. And one of them, uh, I understand that they used a couple of these at uh, Shiloh. They had the Marines offload these off of uh, some ships. And these were uh, used. Now this is, this is a small board. This is a three pounder. And it's of course smooth board, because it's manufactured in the 1840s. And, uh, and that's the, the Civil War history. They Most of the the, the we call it the dirty water navy that ran the, the Mississippi and down to the Gulf and uh, they used anything that would float and it, this was a great asset for them right here and I'll show you some of the features on it so we're going to get up and get get close on it where you can see some better shots instead of just this full all right we're repositioned at the rear of the cannon back by the castle and if you look there you can see the the markings of the Ancient Manufacturing Company, uh, Chicopee, Massachusetts. And uh, I'm gonna try to get a little closer than try to pan it, so let's see what happens here. If you look to the far left, you can see the Ames, and you can see the MFG, and then the CO, which is trying to refocus here. And then I'm gonna pan a little bit of back out this to here. And you can try to get over to the left. I don't know if it's going to work, but bear with me a second. I'm not the greatest cameraman. Anyway, that, that kind of gives you an idea of how it's marked. And uh, lovely patina on this barrel. And then I'm going to move up a little bit. Kind of back this back. And if you look at the, the rear position on this thing, and you see where the the main powder hole is, and you see the, the two holes off the left. That's for an apparatus, and you would screw this brass apparatus in there, and it, it would spring loaded like a hammer. And you could put a cap into the to the priming hole there, and you could cock it, and then you pull it with a lanyard. And I'll see if I can find one of them and kind of put it in with a video. But that's what that was for. So that was for a, a, a trigger hammer. So that's why you see the three holes there. Let's see if we can move up the barrel here a little bit. I might have to reposition up. Looks like I will. All right, I'm gonna turn it off and we're gonna move, hopefully in a better position, we can see the three friends. I think you can kind of see it there. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. If you look off to the, to the left, the lower left hand corner you see the T-H-R-E-E. -E. It's in an arch. And if I can turn it up not get you too dizzy. You see three and then you go across and it focus, uh, focuses out of there. We'll see if we can back it off this a hair. See if it'll come back in. It's not gonna come back in. The camera's dizzy, I got it dizzy. But anyway, it's marked in an arch. 
and it's engraved into it to three friends. And I'll try to get another uh, shot of that and see if we can splice it into the to the uh, to the video. And I'll back it off. And you know the the carriage. And you, I, I want you to see this yoke underneath of it. See, on most of all the cannons, they have a trunnion that comes out the left and right side uh, of the barrel. And these have a swivel point that's cast into the barrel and it fits into that bronze block that you see on the iron frame. And these frames were made of iron because they put them on the, the ships and they had a six pound version of this and they had a, a 12 pound version of this. And this is a four pound. And this is the ones they used on the river. And uh, we're gonna try to, uh, yeah, uh, my friend Kenny Rogers just put a, a light up and we'll try to reposition. Yeah, I don't need it right now. Try to reposition on that, that three friends. Anyway, I'm gonna kind of go up toward the muzzle. And I'm gonna get lower so you can see how that trunnion, the bottom yoke, affixed, affixes to the to the carriage itself. Because it's important, because you never get to see these naval style guns here. So I'm gonna turn it off for a second and we'll reposition. Alright, now we're on the again that uh, the underneath yoke, and you can see the bracket that it fits into. Then you see the a big metal pin that goes through uh, the, the casting there, the trunnion yoke, and then goes through the trunnion, comes out the other side, it's got a pin on it. And, uh, and that's how it's, uh, the barrels are fixed to the carriage. So these were used on, and you, you hear, you'll hear the word uh, Dahlgren. Dahlgren, he uh, developed a naval cannon, and a lot of them ended up with his name on it. But this is the naval style in, in the dial, in the Dahlgren type. But I'm going to get another shot of this so you can kind of see that uh, the yoke that's uh, cast onto the barrel. And then we'll get a shot of the muzzle. But first, before we do that, I'm going to spin it around here and try not to make it too dizzy. There you go. So you can see the elevating screw. There we are. The elevating screw there runs all the way through the iron uh, trail and it's threaded and it elevates up. And if you look at the, uh, the shaft in the elevator, it's really long. And that's cause if they set them up on the top of a stern wheeler on the second level, they could point down and, uh, and, and shoot and hit what they were uh, aiming at. A lot, of, a lot of these cannons in uh, uh, the regular military field carriages, they didn't have the elevation adjustment that had the range like these naval ones did. So I kind of wanted to show that to you and bring that point up. Now we're going to move around to the front so you can see the muzzle of this. this again, this cannon is in the 1840 style and uh, it's got the flare muzzle. So let me turn it off and we'll bring it around to the front. All right, now, now we got a real good shot of that barrel yoke going down through the mounting housing. And you can see the, the, the big pin going through it and the carter key going to it. Anyway, it was machined out of bronze. And you can see how it's affixed to that iron axle that runs across. I mean, it's pretty cool the way it's set up. But you know, I don't know anybody's ever done a video on, the, on these type of naval carriages because they're pretty rare. And this thing's all hand forged. These things were forged, and where that uh, elevation screw goes in there, that's flared and it's and it's bored out. I mean, they're really complicated carriages. All right, now we're going to move to the muzzle. All right, we're up here on this flared muzzle, and again, this is of the the 1840 style smoothbore cannon. You can see the flare on it, and you can see that it's smoothbore. And my friend uh, Kenny has got a, a light holding it down, so you can actually see. Uh, you know, down through the end of the barrel. But that's indicative of the 1840 style that Ames produced. And it's, again, wonderful patina all over this particularly uh, wonderful carriage in cannon barrel. And uh, I'm going to try to roll it back a little bit, fade it back. And you can see, if I can, if I can get it to fade back a little bit, you can see if you look on each side of the barrel that there's a rod that runs back toward the trail. And those are support rods. 
when the cannon fired, the carriage wouldn't tweak. And so it gave it real great stability. And them things are, are like two inches in diameter. They're tremendous in size. These carriages are really heavy. And, and again, wonderfully executed. And we're gonna roll around here on the other side and show you how the, uh, the wheels are, are pinned in. I'm gonna, while, I, while I've got the camera on the side, I'm just gonna go over to the wheels. And, and what that is, that's a tapered shaft on the inside. And the wheel has a metal sleeve in there, kind of like a cone. And, and then it, you know, you grease it, you slide the wheel on it, and then I'll get around here in the corner and we'll show you how it's pinned on. All right, now we're over here and you can see the keys that hold the, uh, the wheel on the axle. And I'll try to zoom up a little bit. You know, we're in, a, we're in the Museum Battles of the Western Theater here in historic Bardstown. And I'll try to move the camera over this there. And these are, that's a good shot right there. These are keyed just like a regular fill carriage and uh, wonderfully done. And again, this, this can is this outstanding condition. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move to the back of the carriage and we're gonna look at this wheel. And this wheel was made to, again, you know, they use these on deck. So let me move back here and we can talk about that for a second. All right, now you can see the, the rear wheel. And the rear, rear wheel, it's almost like a tongue twister. It's bronze. And you see the, the very end of the black uh, uh, carriage part. That's where you put a wooden, uh, they call it a, a spike. And you could actually move the cannon in any direction you wanted to. And also too, that uh, there, if you see that chain down there, and I'm, I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit more. I wanna see the overall what I'm talking about. You pull that pin out of there and that carriage actually sits on a deck and stabilizes the gun and it repins and it, 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 the, the whole iron carriage will sit on a deck. Now I've seen old photographs, CDVs of course, and they'll have these wheels, the, the, of course the main wheels in the front, and they'll have rope and they'll lace them wheels and, and all the way around on the two front wheels. And, and what that does, it keeps it from sliding on the deck of a ship. But this is a, a, a real ingenious way to design the, the rear of a can carriage. And again, this is of the, the Dalvern style. And it's just well thought out, well, well engineered. And when you see the old, uh, uh, naval pictures, you'll see some guys standing around uh, these Dalvern type carriages with the cannons on them. And normally they're, they're six pound or 12 pounders. So this is really a unique carriage and it's a unique gun. Now let's, I'm, I'm gonna make the, the final uh, piece of our information here. We're gonna go back to this, uh, to the top of the barrel and try to get this, a good picture of the three friends, the engraving. And we'll talk about that particular ship. Okay, I think here in the museum with this indirect lighting, I think this is the best I'm gonna get it. But I got a good shot of the friends section of the three friends that's engraved on top of the barrel. Uh, th it, this is a, a post-war engraving. Uh, uh, there was a three friends that, that ran the intercoastal waterways uh, in, around the Florida area during the Civil War. And then after that, the name was transferred to a, to a, a sail ship slash steamship. And uh, it, it was called the Three Friends. And it had a kind of a, a dark side uh, uh, of its history. In 1896, it started running guns down to Cuba. They wanted to overthrow the Spanish government down there. And so it was a great gun runner, run from Florida down around the Keys and then over to Cuba and they transfer the guns back. Well, the United States Navy caught him doing this in 1896. And they impounded the ship and all the contents. And this, actually this, the owner of this ship took the United States to the Supreme Court to get his ship back. And, he, and it was actually this case about this ship, the Three Friends, was argued in the Supreme Court in 1897. And then, of course, 
the, the Spanish American War started. So then everything was just dismissed and it got a ship back and, and all the contents. And then after the war, uh, this, this ship stayed around the uh, Jacksonville area. And there was a, a, a famous governor, and I think it was from 1905 to 1907, Napoleon Barnabar Bowden, I believe, believe his name. And I hate to butcher his name, but that's, uh, that was the owner of this ship, and he became governor of Florida. And he owned the ship for a while. And then the ship kind of hung around in Florida and, and, and did tug work up until up through World War II. And then it just fell apart by the 1950s. And they took it out and they sunk it out there in Jacksonville Bay. And it's it kind of like a coral reef now. But a real unique history from you know the Civil War and, then, and transferred to the Spanish-American War. And here we are today, this wonderful piece of history in the, the Battles of the Western Theater here in historic Barstown, Kentucky. And again, these things are so rare. I mean, they're so extremely rare. And value on these type of cannons, uh, there's not enough sold. Uh, a regular naval carriage, uh, six pound or 12 pound, they just sold one. I, I forgot which major auction house sold one for uh, 120,000. I've seen them sell for 90,000. So, and those are six and 12 pounders. So this would be far behind that. But it's got a great history with it, which most of them don't have. And, and a wonderful early uh, Ames barrel, great markings on it. And this condition is just, you know, wonderful and, and untouched patina. So from Civil War Guru, I'm gonna sign off. And by the way, check out the Civil War Guru's uh, website because we get a lot of consigners that want to consign and we specialize a lot in in cannons and and you know we we got a test for old uh, classic cars and corvettes and and uh aircraft also biplanes and warbirds etc so you know we always try to keep everything interesting and so we're going to take one final shot of this at, at you know so you can get the the whole cannon back into the to the uh the, the film and so we can see it one more time and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we've been kind uh, out of out doing other things and we're working on classic car cars that we hadn't been able to shoot any videos, but now it's winter time. So we're gonna crank up our videos. And again, check out our website. And if you need something praised, we do oral appraisals for nothing, free. We just enjoy looking at stuff. And, and if you need assistance selling it, we can either help you sell it or we know somebody that can if we can't. So uh, check out the website, our phone number's on the website. And so from Civil War, Civil War Guru, have a great day.